Every day, millions of litres of milk are transformed into condensed milk, a versatile ingredient used in desserts, coffee and sweets around the world. But how does milk go from a liquid to that thick, sweet cream we all know? To find out, we enter Nestlé's facilities in the United States, the world's largest producer of condensed milk. Although many believe condensed milk is a modern invention, its history began much earlier. In the 13th century, Marco Polo reported that the Tatars cooked milk until it turned into a paste that could later be dissolved in water. The road to the modern version started in the 19th century, when Frenchman Nicolas Apert tried to preserve milk in sealed bottles, and later, Englishman William Newton added sugar to extend its shelf life. The major breakthrough came in 1856 with Gail Borden. After witnessing children die from contaminated milk during a sea voyage, he became determined to find a safe preservation method. Inspired by vacuum techniques used to concentrate fruit juices, he developed a way to evaporate water without spoiling the milk. After several failed attempts, he patented his process and opened a factory in Connecticut with financial backing. The result was a canned product that could last more than a year, known as condensed milk. Its real fame came during the American Civil War. Soldiers used it as a ration because it didn't need refrigeration, was high in calories and easy to transport. The government bought millions of cans and Borden rebranded his company as Eagle Brand to stand out from imitators. After the war, its popularity spread across Europe, Canada and Latin America. Today, it's an essential part of countless desserts, drinks and recipes worldwide, with millions of cans consumed daily. But what actually happens inside a condensed milk factory? Before reaching the can, the story of condensed milk begins far earlier, on dairy farms. Without cows, there is no milk. And without milk, there is no condensed milk. The United States alone has around 60,000 dairy farms raising over 9 million cows dedicated exclusively to milk production. The main breeds are Holstein, known for high yield, and Jersey, which produces milk richer in fat and protein, ideal for creamy products. Farms range from small family operations to large-scale industrial ones, with an increasing number of organic projects avoiding hormones, promoting grazing and focusing on sustainability. Many even convert manure into energy through biodigesters or reuse water to minimise environmental impact. So how are thousands of cows milked every day? This is where technology comes in. A century ago, a farmer could hand milk about six cows per hour. Today, machines can milk 100 or more in the same time. Suction cups are placed on each teat, using pulsing vacuum pressure to mimic a calf's suckling. Before attaching them, the teats are cleaned with disinfectants like iodine or chlorhexidine to prevent infections such as mastitis. Each cow takes about seven minutes and automatic sensors detach the equipment once milk flow decreases. The most advanced farms even use robots. Cows enter voluntarily, lasers position the cups, and sensors analyze the milk instantly to detect contamination. Of course, none of this works without caring for the cows. Their well-being directly affects both quantity and quality. In modern farms with 7,000 cows or more, details like ventilation, sand or foam bedding automatic brushes, and smart collars that monitor health and activity are carefully managed. Some use carousel milking systems, where up to 80 cows ride a rotating platform and are milked as it spins, about 30% faster than traditional setups. The schedule is consistent too. Many cows are milked at the same times every day, like 5 in the morning and 5 in the evening, since calm cows produce more and better milk. To produce that much milk, Cows need more than just grass. They spend up to eight hours a day eating and ruminating, consuming around 45 kilograms of feed, alfalfa hay, corn silage, grains like soy or barley, and mineral supplements. They may drink up to 300 liters of water daily, especially in warm climates. Nutritionists design precise diets balancing protein, fiber, and energy. Thanks to proper feeding, healthcare, and genetics, a modern cow can produce between 30 and 40 litres of milk per day, double or triple what was possible 50 years ago. In some countries, bovine somatotropin has been used to boost production, 
though it's banned in the European Union for animal welfare reasons. The production cycle begins when a cow is about two years old, after her first calf. She is artificially inseminated at 15 months, and after nine months of gestation, the calf is born. About an hour later, it's separated from the mother to prevent infection and maintain milk hygiene, a controversial but standard industry practice. Male calves are usually raised for beef, while females become future milkers. The calf drinks colostrum from a bottle to gain immunity, while the cow enters her milking phase, producing twice a day for about 305 days, peaking at up to 50 litres in the early months. Then she rests for about two months before the cycle repeats. On average, a cow has three to five productive cycles, living five to seven years in production, though in well-managed farms they can reach 10. Now, how does milk actually form inside the cow? This is where it gets fascinating. Cows have four stomachs and are experts at recycling nutrients, microbes in the rumen ferment food, and generate proteins, vitamins, and fatty acids that enter the bloodstream. From there, they travel to the udder, where thousands of tiny sacs called alveoli transform these nutrients into milk. The cells produce lactose from glucose, casein from amino acids, and fat from fatty acids. Hormones such as prolactin and oxytocin control the process. The result is a liquid made up of about 87% water, along with fats, proteins, lactose, calcium, and vitamins. Essentially, a biological formula designed to nourish everything from a calf to an entire industry. When milk leaves the cow, it's still warm, around 32 to 37 degrees Celsius. Within seconds, it's pumped into refrigerated tanks on the farm and cooled to about 2 to 4 degrees to slow bacterial growth. At this stage, it's still raw milk, which can contain pathogens like Salmonella, E. coli or Listeria, so it isn't safe to drink yet. Before leaving the farm, it undergoes quick testing, bacterial count, somatic cell count, which indicates udder health, and antibiotic residue detection. If everything checks out, it's loaded into massive stainless steel tank trucks holding up to 30,000 litres. These trucks are insulated, equipped with pumps and temperature control, and thoroughly cleaned and disinfected after every trip. In countries like the United States, strict regulations require the milk to reach the plant within two hours. Once at the plant, such as Nestlé's facilities in California or similar factories worldwide, another critical stage begins. These facilities operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week, processing over 1.6 million litres daily. Tanker trucks unload the milk, but nothing is accepted without testing. Each batch is analysed in the lab for pH, temperature, fat and protein content, total solids and antibiotics using rapid methods like the DELVA test. If any result fails, the entire shipment is rejected. Approved milk is stored in massive stainless steel silos that can hold up to 2 million litres, equipped with agitation and cooling systems to prevent separation or spoilage. These silos maintain a steady flow so that production never stops. Now the transformation toward condensed milk truly begins. The process starts with clarification. The milk passes through a centrifuge spinning at high speed to remove microscopic impurities. Then the composition is standardized. For typical sweetened condensed milk, it's adjusted to about 8% fat and around 20% non-fat solids, adding cream or skimmed milk if needed to achieve the exact ratio. If a low fat base is required, another centrifuge comes into play, capable of processing over 22,000 litres per hour and rotating at 5 to 7,000 revolutions per minute. The force separates the skimmed milk, which contains less than 0.1% fat, from the cream, which can reach up to 40%. The skimmed portion continues through the process, while the cream is used for other products such as butter or ice cream. But there's a crucial step to make the milk safe. Pasteurization. This process was invented in 1862 by Louis Pasteur, who sought to prevent wine from spoiling. By the late 19th century, the technique was adapted for milk to combat diseases like tuberculosis and brucellosis, which were common when raw milk was consumed. Today, condensed milk plants use a modern version known as high-temperature short-time. 
How does it work? The milk, arriving at around 4 degrees Celsius, passes through a plate heat exchanger, where it's quickly heated to about 75 degrees for just 15 seconds. This burst of heat eliminates nearly all harmful bacteria without cooking the milk or affecting its flavour and nutrients. It's then cooled back down to 4 degrees in under a minute, ensuring no further reactions occur. Every step is monitored by sensors that prevent overheating or failure, complying with strict FDA standards. This stage not only protects the consumer, but also prepares the milk for the following phases. Now comes the sweet part, the sugar. In sweetened condensed milk, sugar makes up 40 to 45% of the final weight. It's not just for taste, it acts as a natural preservative. Why? Because dissolving that much sucrose creates an environment where bacteria can't survive. It lowers water activity to levels where almost nothing can grow. Unlike unsweetened evaporated milk, this eliminates the need for extreme sterilization. The sugar can be added as syrup or as fine crystals depending on the machinery, and it's mixed at about 70 degrees, so it fully dissolves without clumping or creating a grainy texture. In some cases, powdered lactose is also added to control crystallization later on, ensuring a smooth consistency. During this stage, many plants perform light homogenization to evenly distribute fat and sugar, keeping the mixture uniform and stable. Then comes the heart of the process, evaporation. Here, about 60% of the water is removed, concentrating the solids to around 30 to 40% and achieving that thick, syrupy texture we all recognize. Specialized evaporators are used, such as multiple effect or falling film vacuum types, which operate at low temperatures to preserve delicate flavors and nutrients like B vitamins and proteins. By reducing the pressure, water boils at only 40 to 60 degrees, preventing the milk from cooking or caramelizing. In large plants, the milk flows through thin tubes surrounded by steam, and residual heat from one stage is reused in the next, saving up to 75% of energy. Optical and density sensors monitor concentration in real time, ensuring the perfect balance between milk and sugar. In regions with limited fresh milk, like Southeast Asia, Recombined milk powder, oil and sugar are used instead, speeding production and maintaining consistent quality worldwide. This evaporation not only thickens the milk, but also concentrates proteins and minerals, boosting nutritional value, though it requires careful control to prevent coagulation. Next comes final homogenization. The concentrated mixture is forced through high pressure valves that break fat globules into tiny particles less than two microns in size. This prevents the cream from separating and ensures a smooth, uniform texture. It also improves digestibility, allowing enzymes to act more efficiently and prevents the formation of a creamy layer on the surface of the can. Modern plants use a two-stage homogenization, one high pressure and one low, operating around 60 degrees to reduce viscosity and maintain flow. This stage is essential because as milk becomes more concentrated, the fat tends to clump if not handled precisely. Finally comes cooling and crystallization, particularly important for sweetened condensed milk. First, the mixture is cooled from 60 to 35 degrees using heat exchangers or flash coolers, triggering lactose crystal formation. Between stages, about 1% of powdered lactose is seeded into the mixture to create small uniform crystals that aren't felt on the tongue preventing a sandy texture. Then it's cooled further to 18 degrees in slowly stirred tanks for several hours, completing crystallization and gradually increasing viscosity. Even the later storage temperature, ideally around 20 degrees, affects stability, preventing the product from gelling over time. This careful process ensures that condensed milk has the thick, silky texture everyone expects in each can. Before moving on to the final step, did you know Condensed milk is the base for some of the world's most famous sweets? Yes, those you've probably tasted. Dulce de leche, arequipe, cajeta, or manjar. What's fascinating is how something so simple transforms into a golden, creamy dessert. It all happens through a chemical process known as the Maillard reaction. When condensed milk is heated slowly, its sugars and proteins react, creating that rich caramel color and sweet, distinctive flavor. 
and it doesn't stop there. As it cooks, the mixture is constantly stirred to stay creamy and prevent burning, developing that silky texture that makes spreading dolce de leche over bread, cookies, or pastries such a delight. The versatility of condensed milk is incredible. In Latin America, it's used for flans, alpha jaws, cakes, and ice creams. In Asia, it's mixed with coffee, tea, and traditional drinks, hot or cold. Now, to reach millions of tables, condensed milk goes through packaging and sterilization. First, the containers. Whether traditional tin cans coated to prevent corrosion or modern aseptic cartons like Tetra Pak are thoroughly sterilized. Then, automatic filling machines precisely measure each portion, typically 397 grams, using pumps or weighers to minimize waste and ensure uniformity. After that, the containers are hermetically sealed, either welded cans or twist-off caps with rubber seals, blocking air and contaminants. All this takes place in ultra-clean rooms with filtered air meeting strict hygiene standards. For maximum safety, cans are placed in autoclaves or retorts, where steam at 110 degrees sterilizes them for about 10 minutes. This treatment eliminates even the most resistant spores, such as Clostridium botulinum, ensuring the milk can be stored at room temperature for up to 24 months without refrigeration. Finally, before leaving the plant, each batch undergoes rigorous quality control, viscosity testing, microbial counts, and stability checks. This meticulous attention, from sterilization to final inspection, guarantees that every can of condensed milk reaches your table safe, smooth, and delicious. And that's how condensed milk is made, a product loved by millions around the world. Tell me, what did you think of the process? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. In the next windows, you'll find more videos of industrial processes just as fascinating as this one. See you next time.